I will f***ing cut away my clit lah, I tell you. I just can't believe she called herself the little mermaid. See, baby, baby, say, hey, f*** lah, please lah. Ugh. Talk cock, man, seriously. Like, these privileged people have no idea how they sound like to the normal person, man, seriously. Hi guys, today I'm doing a reaction video to the very famous interview that Meghan Marker and Prince Harry recently had with Oprah. So I will be watching the video and giving my comments as we watch along so that you guys don't have to watch the entire two hour long interview which is cringy to say the least. Anyway, I just want to have a little bit of a warning before you watch this video. So if you like Meghan Marker, right, don't watch this video because I'm telling you from the start that I hate her and I think that she's a disgusting person and this video is going to be extremely biased against her. Okay, I have disliked her since like her engagement, okay? Actually, I didn't even like her in suits, ah, okay? So since back then, yeah, I just knew there's something wrong with this woman. So anyway, let's get to watching it. Tonight, for the first yes. time, they tell their story. Okay, they are like talking about their chickens. Why do they have chickens? Whoa! <laughs> oh my god, her clothes look like there's bird shit on it. Do you know if you're having a boy or girl? We do this time. I will wait for my uh, husband to join us and we can share that with you. Okay, that would be... Look at this bitch. She's just like, I will wait for my husband to come and we can share the gender of our baby with you. What happened to you wanting privacy? I thought you want privacy and then this is just like how you have your privacy, right? You share everything with the world, with Oprah. Fantastic. Critical. There's not been an agreement. You don't know what I'm going to ask. No. And there is no subject that's off limits. Yeah. And you are not okay, okay, getting okay. paid. Pass, 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 pass. I just want to say that Oprah's just like, oh, there are no subjects that are off limit. But the uh, the questions that she asks are fucking bullshit. Okay, I really watched this once, but here's my second time reaction. And she just asks all these softball questions that is just like emotional and empathetic. It's just like all the difficult questions you never even ask, Law. Fucking useless, this Oprah. So I was there on that wedding day and I so recall this sense of m magic. I mean, I I'd never experienced anything like it. And you, Oprah. when you came through that door, it seemed She's like, like you oh, were like... She's like, a sense of magic for the wedding. Like she met Oprah down once the aisle. and she invited Oprah were to the wedding. Were you even inside your body at that time? I've thought about this Social a lot climber. because... You're marrying the monarchy. What did you think it was going to be like? I will say I went into it naively. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't grow up knowing much about the royal family. It wasn't something... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Pause, pause, pause. She's just like... I would say I went into it naively. I didn't know much about the royal family growing up. Liar! Liar! There's a picture of her outside Buckingham Palace looking starry-eyed, okay? When she was a kid. Like, come on lah! Anyone that you are dating, right? You at least go to your Instagram profile, Google them, see what they do and all that, right? Before you start properly dating someone, it's like normal, basic knowledge. Everyone does it. I don't believe for a fucking second, okay? Nobody fucking believes you, Megan. She's like, I went into it naively. Yeah, sure. Of course. And if you're going to marry a royal, then you would do research about what that would mean. Well, I didn't yes, do any research precisely. About what that would mean. Research. Oh, you no. don't do any research. I've never I'm looked sure. up my husband online. I just didn't feel a need to because everything that I needed to know, he was sharing with me, right? Or everything okay. that we thought. This fucking liar, fucking bitch. If she never Googled Prince Harry before this or found out more about him, okay, I will fucking cut away my clit, uh, I tell you. What do you know about the royals? It's what you read in oh, fairy tales. Right? You think it's what, what you fairy know about tales, the royals, what are you talking right? About? So it's easy to like Diana's death have is so an famous. image of it that is so it? far from, from reality. And that's what was really tricky over those past few years is when the perception and the reality are two very different Liar. things and you're being judged on the perception but you're living the reality of it, mm -hmm. there's a complete misalignment and there's no way to explain that to people. Well, you know, in every family, I think, things get serious mm -hmm. when you are brought in to meet the mother or the grandmother. Mm -hmm. In your situation, it's the queen. The real queen. The she real queen. Smart. She is smart. You're, you're so, meaning. like, what? you can see that she is clearly... She has a goal in mind, okay? So if you notice throughout the whole interview, she talks about not being protected by the institution the entire time. And that's a persuasion technique, right? To constantly drum in and drum in and drum in your point so that this is the one issue that she really needs to drive into everyone's mind, which is that the institution is not protecting her. And she knows how to play the victim by adding in all the buzzwords like mental health, you know, uh, 
I don't know what else, racism and all these other things that people are passionate about. She adds it all in, okay, to drive home the point that this this is a cruel, heartless institution that's not protecting her, okay? And she's very smart to know that a lot of people love the queen, right? Because the queen is like so cute, right? Who cannot love the queen? So she knows that she cannot attack the queen because then she would lose. So she makes sure to fucking kaupo the queen every single time by saying how nice the queen is, okay? We'll continue and we'll see this charade that she puts on. Harry and I are in the car and he says, okay, well, my, my grandmother's there, so you're going to meet her. I go, oh, great. I love Grimp. I loved my grandmother. I used to take care of my grandma. This is great. He goes, right. Uh, okay, please, please, please. Just, just, just take note of all the parts, right, where she throws in how fucking kind she is. And she's just like, I care for animals. I care for people's mental health. I care about orphans and, 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 and chickens and all class, kinds of crap. Okay, And there she is just throwing in subtly. I take care of my grandparents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. That's why none of your family members love you because you're so filial, right? We put on our wellies to feed the hens Megan and Harry recently rescued from a factory farm. I love hey, you, fuck la. That, please la. Who the fuck rescues chickens la? Are you fucking kidding me? Res chicken also you are the rescue la. You don't tell me you don't fucking eat chicken la. Ugh. Chicken also can rescue. Yeah. Next time I rescue cockroach, I rescue ants la. In the house here. Archie's chicken. Oh, how cute is that? She's always wanted chickens. But you know, I just love rescuing. Three days before our wedding, we got mm. married. Ah. No one knows God, that, but so we called simple, the Archbishop so and we just said, look, this thing, this spectacle no, 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 is for the look world. Harry's face. Harry's face but is just we like, want our union between us. Like so, like, the vows that we have framed you in know, our room she knows that just she's the two lying. of us in our backyard with the Archbishop look, of Canterbury. Look at his face, and, his face. and that was the piece that. Just the three of us. Just the three of us. Just the three of us. Okay, so somebody did some research on this and said that she's not telling the truth because you cannot get married in a fucking backyard. You need witnesses so that in case anyone wants to object to the wedding and so since it's just the three of them okay the wedding just simply does not count okay and and on top of this right the marriage search shows that they got married on the day of the actual wedding that everyone saw on tv and another question is if you did not actually get married on that day why are you wasting all the taxpayers money right that's used to pay for your giant 30 million pound wedding or something like that like to do the whole exchange of the ring and everything, you fucking waste people's money, right? You're cheating them, right? The fuck, you fucking bitch, dude. She's gonna say all these things, so it seems like she's very, very, like, tan chun and very pure and innocent and just a sweet, kind girl who just wants to get married to a love of her life, who loves to rescue, of all things, chickens. I'm gonna die. Don't let me see you we'll eat K KFC, I tell you. Six months after Harry and Meghan's wedding, headlines began to swirl about a rift between Meghan and her sister-in-law, the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton. It was reported that Meghan had left Kate in tears over the bride-to-be's strict demands over flower girl dresses. Did you make Kate cry? No. So where did that come from? No, no. Okay, okay, okay. She says that she didn't make Kate cry, okay? And she goes on later on to talk about how it was Kate who made her cry. But my question is, how do you know you never made Kate cry? She can be crying in secret after that, what? You don't have to be there to see it, right? She can be upset by something that you said and then go home and cry, right? How, how can you say for sure that you didn't make her cry? Was there a situation where she where might have cried from? or she could no, have cried? No, the no. reverse happened. Bollocks. It was a really hard week of the wedding and she was upset about something, but she owned it and she apologized and she brought me flowers and what was uh, that, six, seven months after our wedding? I don't believe this for that one the second. the reverse of that would be out in the world. So when you I say... Never, I would have never wanted that to come out about her. Yeah, but oh, you would have never wanted that to come out about her, but you are happy to talk about it with Oprah right now, right? To millions of people watching this. Bitch, firstly, fucking give us the context of how you she made you cry, right? Like, when someone makes you cry, it can be over something that's actually hurtful or your own self thing that is hurtful because you are sensitive or like whatever, right? And like, goodness knows what Kate did. Maybe Kate just gave her a side glance when, or maybe Kate, she asked Kate, is my dress nice? And then Kate took one second late to reply and then she's just ah, you're all heavy. So, it doesn't mean that it's Kate's fault, right? Stupid she. 
Mm -hmm. All the time the story's out there, you had made Kate cry, you knew all along, and people around you knew that that wasn't true. Everyone in the institution knew it wasn't so true. So why didn't somebody just say that? It's a good question. Hmm. You see, you see, she's very, very clever, right? She's very clever because she's like, everyone in the institution knows that I didn't make Kate cry. But then she also knows that even if she's not telling the truth, there's no way that the institution can come out and say, look, it's true, Megan Marco made Kate cry. Like, she just knows that she's hitting like this punching bag that just can't fight back. You know what I mean? And coming up like she's you know, going to have all kinds of like other accusations that it's just like zero proof, no evidence. Everyone is just as based on what she says and then the other side can't fight back. It's just like a super unfair battle. La. There were stories where Kate was being praised for holding her baby bump. Oh gosh, have I done it since we've been sitting yes, down? You've probably. been doing it the whole time. Okay. Uh, Kate was yeah. praised for cradling her baby Gross. bump. And the headline about you doing the same thing said, Megan can't keep hands off her baby bump. Oprah's talking about how, you know, like, articles are very, very unfair towards Megan Markle. And, like, usually people will praise Kate for one thing and, and like, scold Megan Markle for another thing. And one of the things was cradling the baby bump, right? But I, I just, I cannot explain to you why, okay? The moment I saw those pictures of her just whole day touching her baby bump, right? Like... It's just gross la. Like, really, I'm just biased. But it's the way she's holding it, she's like holding it like, you know, like that. And like, so, 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 look at me, I made a royal baby kind of face. It's just, I, I guess I'm really a, a bit biased, okay, to be fair. I've always worked. I've always valued independence. I've always been outspoken, especially about women's rights. I mean, that's the sad yeah, irony yeah, of the yeah, last yeah. four years is I've advocated for <sighs> so long for women to use Again, their voice. Again, the buzzwords. Um, were you silent or were you silenced? She's so fucking loud. not silent. What are you talking about? She's fucking talkative. So how does that work? Were you told? How, how, is, this how is this silent? How is this silent? Can, can somebody the... explain to me how is this silent? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, can, I, can I just say for a second she's like oh thank god I, I am all of those things that they disapprove of thank god I've always worked at a fucking Humphrey yogurt what do you mean by thank god if you didn't have all of those things okay you claim that it's because of all these things right then it made your life so miserable that you are suicidal and that's why the royal family doesn't like you and now you're saying thank god you have all those things what the fuck are you talking about can you like don't be so double standard no seriously make up your mind it was only once we were married and everything started to really worsen that I came to understand that not only was I not being protected, but that they were willing to lie to protect other members of the family, but they weren't willing to tell the truth to protect me and my husband. Okay, so she's basically trying to say, right, like, see, I told you, right, she keeps, she will keep hammering this point about not being protected. I just keep a note of it, okay? Every time it comes out, we are like, ding, ding, ding. She talks about it. And she's saying that the royal family just throws her under the bus, including Harry. Like, my question is, why would they do that? It does not make any fucking sense. Like, the fact that is that the monarchy exists to protect its own existence, right? They want good press about the royals. Like, they don't want any bad press. As an institution, I'm not talking about maybe the queen just this doesn't like her or like whatever, right? Why would they allow or, or, or rather one bad press about any royal member or why would they want a royal member to be so upset that she whisked the, the prince away from the family to go and live in the U.S. It, it just fucking doesn't make sense, Megan. The firm would say, well, you can't do this because it'll look like that. You can't, so even, can I go and have lunch with my friends? No, 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 you're oversaturated, you're everywhere. It would be best for you to not go out to lunch with your friends. I go, well, I haven't, I haven't left the house in months. I mean, there was a day that one of the members of the family, she came over and she said, why don't you just lay low Liar. for a little while? Liar. Because you are everywhere right now. Liar, liar, pants said, on fire. I've left the house twice in four months. Twice in I'm four months, okay? This is absolutely nowhere. fucking not true. Okay, it has been contradicted by like news articles everywhere. She left for by private jet to go to like a baby shower. She meets her friends. She has been photographed doing it. It is just not true. I don't know what the fuck she's talking about. Separate from that, what was happening behind closed doors was 
you know, we knew I was pregnant. We now know it's Archie um, and that it was a boy. We didn't know any of that at the time. They didn't want him to be a prince or a princess, not knowing what the gender would be, which would be different from protocol. And that he wasn't going to receive okay, security. Okay, let's pause here for one second, okay? What? Here she goes on to give this bombshell news that the institution has decided not to give her son, Archie, the title of prince, right? However, like she herself has said that all these titles don't matter to her. She tried to frame it such that, you know, prince or not prince, it doesn't matter. But, you know, it's the fact that because he's not a prince, he will not be given security. Okay, question number one, like... Why is it, it? She's trying to frame it such that you know, it is against protocol. But it is not against protocol. The fact is that he's too far away from, uh, in line to the being the throne, for him to get a prince title, and that's the official reason. Like the fact that is that actually only Prince George should be able to be called prince, and even Charlotte and. The third one, I can't remember the kid's third baby's name. They were not supposed to have prince and princess either, but the queen made an extra concession for them, right? And she's saying that the institution, okay, is the one deliberately not giving her the title. And now she's saying, but it's not the institution who makes this decision. It's the queen who does it. So she's directly saying that the queen just, like, you know, just doesn't like her son, I guess, for whatever reason, which she alludes to racism later on. Yeah, but, you know, you do some simple research on it. Prince Andrew's kids don't have the prince and princess title, like, neither do many of the other royal family members' children. So, I don't know what she's going on about. Like. She's just like, oh, yeah. it's it's very infuriating to think that the whole world believes her, you know? Like, people don't do their research and they just assume it's true. What? Oh, it's so really hard. hard. What do you mean? He wasn't going to receive security. You cannot hire your own security, man. What's this the fucking problem? This went on for problem? the last few months of our pregnancy. You're so fucking rich. You sign your Netflix deal and everything. Hire your own security. That your son and Harry, Prince Harry's son, were n was not going to receive security? Oprah, right. hire your own security. We haven't created this monster machine around us in terms of clickbait and whoa, tabloid whoa, whoa, whoa. fodder. You well, allowed that. Be, okay, she's saying that we didn't, we didn't create this uh, this media frenzy of everyone going after us, right? And we didn't create... What are you doing now? You're fucking creating this media frenzy. Our son needs to be safe. So how Our do they explain to you that your son, the grandson, <laughs> the great-grandson of the queen, mm -hmm. is not going to have... He wasn't going to be a prince. How do they tell you that? And what reasons did they give? And then say, and so therefore you're not... You don't need protection. You're not part of the royals. You don't deserve there, to get taxpayer there's pay no for your protection. I'm sorry. Hmm. The idea of our son not being safe and also the idea of the first member of color the, in this the, family is, uh, not being titled in the same in. way absolutely fucking that no other evidence is because grandchildren of would be. You know, there was a lot of fear surrounding it. I was very scared of having to offer up our baby knowing that they weren't going to be kept Protection, safe. Protection, ding, ding, ding. You certainly must have had some conversations with Harry about it and have your own suspicions as to why they didn't want to make Archie a prince. They're saying that, like, Oprah is like, oh, you must have your own thoughts about why he wasn't made a prince. And this is supposed to not be scripted or, like, rehearsed. Um, yeah, but I don't believe it, lah. Because it's such a fucking leading, like, bomb question, right? Which goes in segues into the next point. It's just, like, it's so fucking convenient. And what's the reason? Racism. Do you think it's because of his race? Why must this fucking Americans always answer. assume it's about race? In those months when I was pregnant, we have in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title, and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Okay, look. All right, what? so now she's saying that, like, you know, when when the baby, when she was pregnant, somebody had a conversation, okay, listen very carefully, okay, because there's several dif discrepancies here, okay, had a conversation, someone from the royal family had a conversation about how dark his Archie's skin is going to be when he was born. Like, you know, I believe that there are people who, who are racist, definitely it's true, okay, but what I don't believe is that anyone from 
the institution or the royal family would be stupid enough to go and talk to Harry. Okay, she says that person made that conversation with Harry, the father of the child, and say, Wow, I wonder how dark the skin is going to be. Like... Nobody will fucking say that in 2021, okay? And, and and when they were explaining this thing, they just refused to give any context whatsoever on how that conversation went. Why did the person say these things? Did it mean did he mean did he or she mean it in a malicious manner or not? You know, it's just like when I was pregnant with uh Dash, right? People would would tell me stuff like, Oh, I wonder if he's gonna have blonde hair, you know, I wonder if he's gonna have blue eyes, like what what colour do you think his eyes are gonna be? It could be just a very innocent question, like, oh I wonder if if his skin tone is gonna be like Harry or more like Megan's, you know, like and then you own sound sensitive, you go and think of it as racism, right? Like we don't know the context. I need to know the fucking full context. And this is just really, really unfair to the royal family because you're just saying that this person said this thing to you, you refuse to identify who that person is, right? And then, uh. the other side is just left to be like, question mark, question mark, who the fuck said this thing, right? Like, did anyone even actually say it? Nobody fucking knows. There's no evidence, nothing. Who is having that conversation? But she's so clever, you know, she's so clever. You. She brings this in and all the Americans are like, hook, line, sinker, right? Because like, this what? is one of their key issues that they care about. So, Once you bring racism, um, so everyone will be on your side already lah. There is a conversation. Hold up. Hold up. There's Stop several right now. There's Listen several up. conversations. There's a okay. conversation so, with you. Okay. With Harry. Several conversations. Okay. Several. Uh, now she says it's several conversations. About with how Harry. dark your baby is going to be? Potentially. And what that would mean or look like. Ooh. And you're not going to tell me who had the conversation? I think that would yeah, be very yeah, damaging. Yeah, yeah. To you me. are big fucking okay. damaging by not saying who it is. Because if you're not going to say who it is, you mean that the whole royal institution is all racist, right? Versus you say that one person is racist. So may I ask, what is your purpose in, in, in saying this thing? You just want to damage them all, lah, right? Brown, that that would be a problem. Are you saying the that? The baby is fucking white. Lah. I wasn't able to follow up with why, but that if that's the assumption you're making, I think that feels like a pretty safe one. Growing up as a woman of color, as a little girl of color, I know how you want to see someone who looks like you mm -hmm. in you certain like positions. Woman, what are you talking about? These young girls, but even grown women and men who, when I would meet uh, them in our time in the okay, Commonwealth, she looks so how similar much to all the other people. To not to be able to see someone who looks like you don't them know anything like that. Really in this about. position, and I could never understand how it wouldn't be seen as an added benefit. Mm -hmm. When Meghan joined the royal family in 2018, she became the target of unrelenting, pervasive attacks. Okay, I just want to say that, that they just like flashed this montage of all of the racist, like, uh, or, or rather not openly racist, but like racist undertones, kind of like tabloid news about Meghan Markle. And like, okay, I, I think that there's two separate issues here, right? The UK public might be racist. In fact, the tabloids might be posting racist stuff as well, uh, or rather publishing racist stuff as well. But the issue here that we're talking about that she's trying to conflict with is that the fact is that the institution, the royal institution, is racist towards her. Okay, so these are two separate issues. People just shouldn't be racist, of course. But to say that the tabloid being racist has to do with the royal family being racist is... Not the same thing. The royal family didn't ask the terror to, to, to post all these things, what? I just didn't want to be alive anymore. And that was a very clear and real and frightening constant thought. I went to the institution and I said that I needed to go somewhere to get help. I said that I've never felt mm. this way before and I need to go somewhere. And I was told that I couldn't, that it wouldn't be good for the institution. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I gotta I call, call bullshit on this, okay? I fucking gotta call bull fucking shit on this, okay? Like, I don't believe for a second that this actually happened. Like, it just doesn't even fucking make logical sense. She's saying that she was suicidal. She told Harry. Harry told the institution. In which Harry later contradicts himself by saying he told nobody. Okay, he's, she says she told people. And she needed to get help, like a therapist to talk to. And that somehow the royal family and the institution or like whatever, denied her that right to go and see a therapist. Like, 
use your fucking brain to think, right? Like, a therapist can just be one person coming into the castle and signing an NDA and they won't tell anybody, right? Why would you risk letting this Megan Marker go and commit suicide, okay? And, and causing so much taint to the royal family's name, okay? For bullying another girl to death, okay? Other the, uh, after Diana. The monarchy would never want that for themselves. What, she like... She cannot go and call herself. She cannot disguise the therapist as a grapefruit driver and, and come into the castle and talk to her. It doesn't even make sense. She can go out and meet her friends, right? Like, there have been pictures of her doing that. Like, attending baby showers and what crap, right? Like, she cannot go out secretly go and meet a therapist or, or smuggle a therapist into the castle. I just fucking don't believe it. Like. Even on the phone. You can call a therapist on the phone. Why cannot? If Diana can go and call many guys outside to cheat on uh, Prince Charles with you don't tell me you can have a phone call with a fucking therapist this cock la please ah. I don't know how they could expect that after all of this time we would still just be silent if there is an active role that the firm is playing in perpetuating falsehoods about us hmm. that at what? a certain point you're gonna go but you guys, someone just tell the truth. When have they uh, perpetuated falsehoods about you guys? You are fucking highly hated, okay? Because you are the woman who got married to a prince who supposedly didn't do any fucking research, okay? Didn't realise that after you become a duchess, there are certain rules and regulations that you have to adhere to, okay? Which you should have known before you married him, which is why many of the girls that Prince Harry dated before didn't want to marry him because they don't they don't want a life like I wouldn't want a life like that. I wouldn't be happy to be in a life like that. But if I make that choice to do it, then I just not, not have to do it. Like, just like Kate is doing right now right like it becomes your life's mission to protect the monarchy and it is that when you join a company they just have to adhere by the rules like she just refuses to do it she still wants her american freedom american independence and all that and it comes with being scrutinized by the press and i'm sorry you're just fucking unlikable because you do unlikable things like trying to get harry to leave the royal family right and step down from duties and all that you expect the press to still love you and that the the monarchy should just step in and protect you all the way i don't know what the fuck she's just fucking self-entitled like, okay she just believes that like everyone should just be nice to her even though she's fucking bitch to everyone i see we're done in late 2019 Prince Harry and Meghan left the UK and moved to Canada. The couple says they chose Canada, a commonwealth of Britain, with the intention of continuing to serve the Queen. After their move, Harry and Meghan say security, normally provided by the royal family, was cut off. And you're so by far March away from Canada, so expensive. Just days before the COVID lockdown began, Meghan, Harry and Archie relocated to Los Angeles where media mogul Tyler Perry offered them his home as a temporary refuge. He also provided security. They are trying to like blame the royal family again for not giving them security when they have moved to Canada and they have stepped down from their duties. Like, if you are not a working royal, why should taxpayers pay for your security? Can we please, 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 please pause for a second and just be like, offer them refuge like they're fucking homeless, penniless, like poor people. Shut the fuck up. Just stay in some friend's house because it's like freaking like this person gonna let them stay there for free. Like, it's a nice big mansion and then he's providing security for them. If he can hire security, why can't you also hire security? Talk oh, like, seriously. Like, these privileged people have no idea how they sound like to the normal person, man, seriously. You announced that you were stepping back as uh, senior members of the royal family. And then the media reported that you had blindsided the queen, your grandmother. What was the tipping point that made you decide you had to leave? I went to all the places which I thought I should go to to ask for help. We both did, separately and together. So you left because you were asking for help and couldn't get it? Yeah, basically. Wasn't protected, ding, ding, ding. We never <laughs> it's just fucking bullshit, like, okay? She's like, okay, we're not getting the help that we need. We're not getting protected, okay? Ding, ding, ding. And therefore, we are stepping back, okay? And then if you're stepping back, then all the more will help you, right? 
why the fuck would I help somebody who's not involved anymore? Like, if you are a fucking important member of the company, obviously you're going to get all kinds of perks, right? The CEO gets like good perks. And then it's like, one day you just step back and say, well, I'm going to be a part-timer from now on. And then you complain about not getting healthcare anymore. Like, really? You complain about not getting like, you know, I don't know, what's that? Uh, leave anymore. Yeah, because you're fucking part-timer, what? What the fuck? You don't fucking call Bella. They act like, like people are cruel towards you, right? How do you know she wasn't blindsided? Because the way it was presented through the press is that suddenly you made this announcement, she didn't know it was coming. No, I, I, when we were in Canada, I, I had uh, three conversations with my grandmother and two conversations with my father um, before he stopped taking my calls. Really, like, like, he's just going on national TV and just fucking trashing his family like that and talking shit about his father when his father's father is lying in hospital, okay, like, dealing with a life or death situation. In fact, I think he's probably... He doesn't have much long to live, like, huh? Prince Philip's, like, 90 years, 99 years old. It's, why would you go and say this kind of thing? Like, you obviously have a purpose here. You're trying to villainize the royal family and to make yourself seem like victims, right? So you can get more money and, and support from the public at the expense of your own family. Leh. Like, why would you do that? The Little Mermaid came on. Uh-huh. Now, who, who as an adult really watches The Little Mermaid? But it came on. I was like, well, I've, I'm just here all the time. So I may as well watch this. And I went, oh my God. She falls in love with I'm the so prince. Real cute. And because of that, she has to lose her oh voice. My God. Oh. But by the end, she gets her voice back. Gets her voice back. And this is what happened here. You feel she like she just got compared your voice herself back. to her the little mermaid, and she's like, she felt I love the bridge. She lost her voice, but she gets her voice back. That is me. No, it's not you, okay? The fucking little mermaid sacrificed everything for her prince, okay? Including wanting to be human, leaving her family, leaving the place that she's uh, used to. And you couldn't even survive a few months there, okay? And started to tell your prince that he has to leave his family for you. You are not the fucking little mermaid. You are fucking Ursula, okay? Yeah, you stole his voice. Prince Harry doesn't even have a brain now. He's just mind slug, you know? You know mind slug? Yeah, he's just like completely zombified by Megan. So Megan, 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 brainwashed. Uh, I just can't believe she called herself the little mermaid. See, baby, I say. And I, I wanted to be there for her. So did, did you tell other people in the family, I need to get help for her, we need help for no, her? That's just not a conversation okay. that would be had. Okay, so just to be clear, he says, okay, he says, uh, that he never asked for help, like, because he didn't tell anyone that Megan was depressed. And then later on, she's saying that she asked for help many, many times and she was rejected. So what the fuck is it? Like, get your fucking lies straight, la, please. La. I guess I was ashamed of admitting it to them. Oh. And I don't know whether, I don't know whether they've had the same, whether they've had the same feelings or thoughts. Mm-hmm. I have no face, idea. Like, oh, um, God, it's a very oh, God, trapping environment. Lie. Stop. You were ashamed um, of admitting that Megan needed help. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, and so how did I didn't have so how did the institution to. stop her from getting um, a therapist you know we've got some Fucking very top close cop, friends uh, seriously that, that have, I never thought that I would have my security removed because I was born into this position I inherited the risk mm-hmm. and I even and I even wrote letters to his family saying please it's it's very clear the protection oh. of me or Archie is not a priority I accept that so that is noble. fine please keep my husband safe I see the death threats. I see the racist propaganda. Please keep him safe. Mm. Please don't pull his security and announce to the world when he and we are most vulnerable. And they said, it's just not possible. Mm -hmm. There are even stories that you knew all along that this was going to happen. You went through the whole process and it was all intentional to build your brand. Agree. I left my career. What career? You have fucking no career. I left everything. And you have no life. I don't fuck you're talking about. You're a fucking B-rate actress. There was no guidance as well, right? Mm -hmm. There were certain things that you couldn't do, but, you know, unlike what you see in the movies, there's no class on how to, how to speak, how to cross your legs, how to be royal. Oh my gosh, it's just like, okay, there's no etiquette class for me, unlike Princess Diaries, you know, like that might exist for other people and it didn't for me probably because I'm half black. Like, chill the fuck out, sis. Like, how do you know it exists for other people? And... Why don't you just ask your fucking husband to teach you about royal like etiquette, right? You can easily ask him or you can ask 
uh, any of the family members whom you say are so welcoming towards you, you can ask any of them how to do all these things or you could just fucking Google it like a normal person. Like, why do you have to allude everything to some kind of evil plot played by the royal institution? It's just... Family, that was not something that was offered to me. So nobody tells you anything? No. Nobody prepares you. No, no I mean, no, but even... Uh, look, 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 no, 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 no been able to because I myself was trapped. Not trapped, but well. fucking brainwashed. You're so trapped. Out. You were trapped? Yeah, I didn't see a way out. But you'd had this life your whole trapped life. This is your you. life your whole life. I was trapped, but I didn't know. You didn't know fucking know that you were trapped. You were mm. fucking going out on parties, okay, night, wearing a fucking Nazi costume, enjoying yourself. Sort of colliding you know. in the most amazing of ways. And then to see how it, the race. Please explain how a you. Fucking Nazi gunk, I tell you. Raised in a palace in a life of privilege, literally a prince, how you were trapped. Trapped within the system. Everyone is trapped within a system, you motherfucker. Like the rest of my family are. My father and my brother, they are, they not, are they trapped. They are not fucking trapped. They are not fucking trapped, okay? They are dutiful. They are doing what the job requires them to fucking do, which you don't want to do. Okay, you just want all the good stuff that comes out of being a fucking royal and you refuse to have any of the bad stuff that comes with it. Okay, and if... if People in the system are genuinely trapped in there. All of the royals will leave just like him. None of them have to stay to do their duty. A king can abdicate the throne. Why not anyone else? Why are they still in there? There has to be a reason, right? It's because they see a common purpose in, in keeping the monarchy going, which is something that has been going on for thousands of years and they think that it's clearly important to him. It isn't. That we've been supporting. In other words, he but just wants the easy and good part. Yeah, but it exists. But uh, also, but also the, she's the interrupting him again. Spotify of it all. On February 19th, 2021, Buckingham Palace released a statement announcing it was agreed that Prince Harry and Meghan would not return as working members of the royal family. Good kick now. Harry not just survived, but are thriving. You know, this, I mean, just <sighs> she's thriving, miracles. Eh? So it's not, it's not bullying her to make this video because she's yeah, thriving. She's no longer suicidal. Yeah, I think that I was hoping for. Yeah, she did, uh, without, yeah, without question, she's safe. And I would, I would, she I mean, saved me, yeah? Lovely. I would disagree. I think he saved all of us. What? Save all of us? Right. He ultimately called it and was he like... He put you in a life we've which got made to you find a way suicidal. For us, for Archie. And he saved you. And you made a decision that saved, well, certainly saved my life. Um, and saved all of us. But, you know, <laughs> you need to want to be saved. Okay, you finish already, finish already. You guys are a bit I'm going to fucking vomit already. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so we're done with the whole reaction video um, to watching this very, very painful interview. And yeah, so I guess I've said all my thoughts inside here. I overall do not believe anything that Megan Markle says. I think that this is just a very well thought out, elaborate plan of hers to make the world think of her as this giant victim when in no universe is she a fucking victim okay come on like she's fucking rich she's she has a prince as a husband who loves her she has a, a what looks like a happy family and she's thriving and all that that's if you're fucking thriving now what is the point of you right going on this interview to make sure that everyone thinks that the royal family and the royal institution are pieces of shit there's really no need for you to do that. You can just thrive by yourself, right? But no, she has to do this thing because it 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 lifts up her brand as this noble, kind, beautiful woman who is doing all kinds of good in the world. And this will no doubt help her and Harry's future in um, securing more deals, in getting more interviews, where she's going to be paid for it. And, you know, it of course helps her public image to have people like her. Lah. So I just feel like this whole thing is fucking self-serving. And especially for Harry to be backstabbing his family like that, the, the family that has raised him to be who he is, okay, and to, to, to jump in and say, oh, uh, only after Megan met me, I've been like enlightened and, and woke now and, and realized that actually all this time my family have been assholes and uh, old-fashioned in their thinking and like racist and all that. It's just like, 
how did you get raised to become a good person to be able to be woke in the first place if they didn't raise you this way? It just fucking doesn't make sense, okay? And I just I just think this whole like interview is just such a like obvious attempt at like backstabbing the royal family. It, I just oh my god it gets me so pissed off when people can't see through it and most of America especially like liberal America they are they're all falling for all the buzzwords right like racism like mental health la, uh, inclusivity la, blah 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 I've ranted enough about Meghan Markle so I guess I'll just end my video here I hope you guys enjoyed watching this little reaction video and yep so I'll see you guys next time on my YouTube channel but before we go just do the usual remember to like the video okay subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notifications every every time a new video comes out. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. And if you're offended, just fuck off. Okay, bye.